So I'm going to give a little bit of an unconventional talk. Um, about 10 years ago, back in my union days, and everybody here knows I was once a union organizer, it's not a secret. Um, I was visiting work, a worker at home at 54th and Christian. Um, my foot fell through the rotting floorboards of her porch, uh, the house where she and several other adults were living. She was the only one with a job, and it was a minimum wage job. As I was extricating my foot from the floorboards of her porch, I looked up and saw the gleaming towers of Center City in the distance. In my neighborhood, Queen Village, Christian Street represents one of the starkest class and race divides in our region. On the north side, where I live, almost all the residents are white, upper middle class, college graduates, kids who go to summer camp, and magnet high schools. The other side of the street, literally 50 yards away, incomes decline by two thirds. Families are mostly black and brown. Kids do not go to summer camp. Parents did not go to college. That's why I'm here. Since its founding in 1909, the Economy League has believed that high quality analysis and practical insight about the region's most important challenges and opportunities combined with collaborative cross-sector leadership, that's you, are crucial drivers of prosperity in greater Philadelphia. We believe, we believe that metros matter. Equity and inclusion matter. A steady stream of actionable intelligence and insights matter. We also believe that computer technology matters. <laughs> there were some really beautiful images up here. We're gonna go with the flow here. So, this is my fourth Gplex. Um, as I like to say, I was a customer long before I was president of this hair club for men here. <laughs> Those of you who are old enough to get the reference. Um, it's my first as executive director. And under our strategic plan, which we're calling Vision 2021, the Economy League will become a leading 21st century think and do tank, powering your informed and collaborative leadership to drive prosperity across greater Philadelphia. Oh good, we have some technology back. So <laughs> flip to slide number four, please, Devin. I could go back to that the first one with the contrast. I want people to see some of these in there. All right, this is Philadelphia. Right? Beauty next to the crap Next one, next one. Alright, so I'm thrilled to be here with you all. To learn with you how Seattle moves how Seattle works, lives, and thrives, and also, and this is the most important part for me, how it faces big challenges. <coughs> Seattle's gonna teach us a lot about that, I think. Um, first, I wanna thank uh, Jen Egmont. If you haven't met Jen, please raise your hand. Where, where is she? <laughs> and the rest of our amazing staff, um, they make it easy. They make it a joy to come to work every day. Um, and they just tell me what to do. So I just show up and um, do what I do. Um, also, I want to mention that we're part of a national network of independent think tanks called the Governmental Research Association, which is a lot more interesting than it sounds. Um, GRA President Nevin Rass is in the back of the room. Please raise your hand. Um, and she's here to share with other cities, other states, and critically with philanthropy, the importance of leadership development and civic innovation to lift up GPLEX as a national model. So no pressure, but you're on a national stage right now. Um, so our strategic plan, Vision 2021, includes you. So what does a 21st century think and do tank look like? Well, I'm just, part of my purpose here is to make sure everyone leaves this room understanding what the Economy League is and what we're doing and what we plan to do. So our strategic plan, Vision 2021, um, which is in the process of approval, but I'm sure the board is going to sign off on it. Um, first, we are going back to Economy League basics. The organization was founded in 1909 as the Bureau of Municipal Research. Our goal was to professionalize municipal government. Obviously, we've uh, got some work to do in that regard, but we're going to keep going. Um, today, our elected officials often lack basic information upon which to base critical decisions. Right? How many times have we seen a piece of legislation passed and then people are like, oh, how much is this gonna cost? What are its fiscal and economic impacts? Well, it would be good to know that 
beforehand. So we're going to build the Greater Philadelphia Policy Hub, a data portal and our local version of the Congressional Budget Office to help policymakers and citizens make informed decisions. The information you need when and how you need it. Second, we're building a shared solutions portfolio to address collective action problems. The best example of this is an initiative that's already underway at the Economy League called Philadelphia Anchors for Growth and Equity. And I want to thank all my friends from the anchor institutions, particularly Peter Grohlman, Hugh Lavery, Jeff Cooper, um, for their amazing leadership. So give them a round of applause for being the anchor Page, as we're now calling it, leverages the collective purchasing power of our Eds and Meds institutions to create jobs in our neighborhoods and economic opportunities for diverse local businesses. And there are many partners in this initiative, um, many of whom are in the room. And third is our plan for civic activation. Um, we aim to turn you and the 800 others who have been through this program, through GFLEX, into a force for good. Through a new civic accelerator that we're going to be launching later this fall that we're calling GPlex Labs and through an ongoing program of networking and learning that we're going to call GPlex 365. You've already gotten edition number one of the GPlexer. How many of you saw it and opened it? <coughs> Not enough, but next time you will. Um, much more to come and you'll hear much more tonight about GPlex Labs at the leadership reception. Recently, I sat on the steps of my great uncle's synagogue, which is now a Baptist church, in Strawberry Mansion. There are many of these actually, Philadelphia, Baltimore. You see the Jewish star behind the cross. Um, in Strawberry Mansion, which is a neighborhood with a storied past, a challenged present, and incredible potential. Strawberry Mansion Community Development Corporation, under some amazing leadership there um, and support from a lot of the foundations in the, in, in the region, is leading the way to the next chapter. And we aim at the Economy League to be a resource for all neighborhoods. So we know and we believe that metropolitan areas will drive economic growth and innovation now and in the future, as the uh, dearly missed late um, Jeremy Nowak has, has taught us so well. But we need you to connect us to the rest of the country and the rest of the world. That's why we are here together. As the New York Times noted recently, counties with more dispersed networks are on average richer, more educated, and have longer life expectancies and we are not as connected as a region as we need to be to other parts of the country. If you saw those maps, if you read the G plaque, you didn't see the little map of, uh, of Pennsylvania. We're a little insular compared to some other places. Um, so we, we have some work to do. It's part of the reason G Plex exists. For the region we love and we all call home, your leadership matters. This G Plex cohort matters. So let's think, let's do, let's build a greater Philadelphia for all, and let's Tweet our learnings at hashtag tools for Philly. Thank you and enjoy. <laughs>